from the time I heard that there was Hannah was playing a documentary on this book, I thought it was absolutely nuts. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that, how are you going to fill an hour with this? And it's a lovely piece of work. And, uh, mm. you know, and uh, apart from anything Norton and I have to do with this, it's just a lovely piece of work. Exactly so. Exactly so. And, um, <laughs> and I'm very grateful it was made. And it's, and it's, it does what a lot of films, a lot of documentaries, it was coherent. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly so. It had a beginning, middle, and an end. Yes. And if only you had reminded me to brush my hair, it would have been, <laughs> it would have been a masterpiece of and, and, documentarian's art. Um, and, and anything that features Norton and me and is still coherent to fight all the odds. <laughs> well, there's one thing that was just mentioned briefly in that, and it struck me, because that's what both Jules and I, I think we're, we're trying to do, is that the story moved along, and it was full of a million revisions and changes and, uh, and ideas. And a lot of what ended up in that book, we had not anticipated, and in many cases, didn't even know was in there. And from the mail, we, we get a lot of mail on it, and, and things that people say on it, I'm, certain, I'm quite often startled, because they're not something, I didn't write that, I didn't put that in. And it's there because they're thinking in their own way about this now. Uh, the book is searched that way. What, what, a question I had for you, um, Norton, and that you, you started telling me, um, is why Milo? Milo is an unusual name for an American <coughs> boy. Well, he, it turned out he, the name didn't come from an American, from an American boy. I, I was in England in the early to mid-50s. That I had a Fulbright, and I was on, going to school at the University of Liverpool, a pre-Beatle Liverpool. <laughs> That, that must have been a very discouraging well, place. <laughs> of course, the first, the first date I ever had there was in a place called Penny Lane. What did I know about Penny Lane? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but uh, I, I uh, traveled around and did all kinds of things. And there were a lot of things, you know, always kind of percolating in my, in my mind. And when I finally sat down and said, okay, I'm going to write this. And basically, I know I'm going to be... My, the model for what the boy is, but I had almost never gotten really to the root of some of the things I was thinking about. And the book was the process, mm -hmm. and I learned a tremendous amount. And and the, the letters all began to reflect that. You know, this has changed my life, or I think about things differently now. And I said to myself, that couldn't be better. That's what the book should do for any book. You know, make you think. Uh, and and the kids in school, the the. Uh, the meaning of it is what it means to you. It's not what a teacher will tell you, this book means this, or this story you know, means that. And uh, you try that in school sometimes, and you get batted down completely. Yeah, sure. The book is about something. Well, it is, and maybe that's a guide. But you can't you know, go by that, because you see some, sometimes things become so clear for an individual. It's like an epiphany. You, you, you see something, and you see the world, in a way that you never have looked at it before. And, and if a book does that to you, man, that's a good thing. Yes, absolutely. I was at Liverpool, and I had a lot of friends who were in the theater in Dublin. And there was a great traffic back and forth between Liverpool and Dublin, probably the most miserable water trip in the whole world. <laughs> the Irish Sea is always very rough. And we never had enough money to buy a ticket inside. So we spent the entire trip overnight on the deck, mm -hmm. you know, trying to hold on to whatever we, we ate for dinner. <laughs> and we would go over there, and I got to know a lot of the people. And there was one young man who was a wonderful actor and finally came to this country and had a very good career here my, called Milo O'Shea. I don't know whether any of you know that name. He played character parts, mostly. Uh, I didn't know him terribly well, but I, I liked him along with the other people. And that name just stuck. I just loved the name because it was not a name I knew. And I wanted something that was, would take him out of the realm of just being an ordinary kid. It was, he a was, Bob or a... Yeah, he was himself. Yeah. It was yeah. new. He was new. I remember being struck by the two, and, we, and it's funny, there are two Milos in all of American yes. literature. Milo of the Phantom Tollbooth and Milo Minderbender in Catch-22, um, which were both published, I think, in the same yeah. year, right? In, yeah, in right. 16. It was in the same, same year. Same so I think I was mentioning before that uh, there's been... Milo has become a very popular name, I'm told, and people... You know, and when I go to book signings, there's always a couple of Milos I have to pat on the head or shake that. <laughs> and I was at one book, a, a signing out in California, and I, there were three Milos I met, 
And then some woman who must have been about eight and a half months pregnant came up, and I had to pat Milo. <laughs> <laughs> Through the, truly right. the laying on of hands, right? Right. Through the, thank Jules, I've, as you, you know, I've done, written a couple of children's books, and one of them I did in, with uh, uh, wonderful artist Bruce McCall, who had also never done a children's yeah. book like, like you, uh, another grumpy satirist who had been lassoed into... Uh, wonderful into, New Yorker cover artist and... And terrific, yeah. and terrific artist. And the one thing that Bruce could not do was draw a 10-year-old girl. And since the protagonist of the story was a 10-year-old girl, this created some, some <laughs> difficulties. And finally, his, his wife and daughter staged an intervention where they forced him to look at various images of 10-year-old girls before, so he could do it. Was there anything in Norton's text that was just for you as an artist, and that kind of challenge where you said when you read it, how am I going to draw that? Everything. <laughs> oh. I, you know, as, as was stated in, in the film, I didn't see myself as a children's book illustrator. Also, I was, well, it, you, what happened, there's a backstory here. Back in the 50s, when I was eager to do mostly a syndicated comic strip just out of the army and I was putting up together things, but I couldn't interest anybody in anything, so I thought I'd some, uh, make some samples up of children's book stuff and take it around, and I took it around to a publisher, uh, Ursula Nordstrom at Harper's, and... Um, and I thought it was some pretty good stuff. And she says, this reminds me of a young man who's inside a lucky and introduce you to Marie Sendak. Huh. And I took a look at it's the book he had just done with Ruth Krauss, A Hole is to Dig. And I said, I think I'll become a political cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, as, you know, I knew and loved Marie's and Norton too, who loved, yeah. knew and loved him. And, and, um, and he had created such, uh, you know, he was the 800 to 8,000 pound gorilla in, you know, in, in his business. And I did not have children at the time, but what I did love was children's illustration, English children's illustration. And Norton, you know, with the name Milo, and Norton always hanging around uh, a secondhand bookstore in Montague Street in Brooklyn Heights, full of English books and right. English literature. I just started going through those books, and there was a man named Edward Arderzone who did children's right. illustration. And I, I, his line drawings, connected to what the sort of thing that I thought I might learn how to do. So basically, I was just trying to legitimize myself as the, um, as the interpreter of Norton's work, which seemed, you know, could have been almost English, the use of wordplay, for example, mm -hmm. and, um, and a kind of formal line structure, which was very foreign to my own style, but as much as anything else I realized in later years, it's, uh, I'm a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. And what cartoonists know how to do just because it's their birthright is they know how to capture expression and they know how to capture a scene and, and they know how to tell a story in pictures. So it, what I was able to do just instinctively, whatever style I chose, was to pick out the emotion of the moment and the emotion of the story and carry that through. And that's what cartoonists do. But writing, you know, and Amy Maxwell in her review for The New Yorker said, this book is, and I don't think she used quite these words, an instant classic. And I felt that as a five-year-old kid reading it. Was that ever a difficulty for you as a writer, knowing, that, knowing you had written something that well, I think really it worked? In the yeah, it, it scares you a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, I, I, not for the, the reason that it was successful. That caused me some problems in just getting started again on than the second or third or fourth, uh, you know, books. But uh, it, you suddenly say to yourself, oh my goodness, am I, gonna, if I, this next book is going to be good, they're going to want me to do another one, mm -hmm. and then another one, and then the, that, that really bothered me. Mm -hmm. And so each, I decided the second book could have n literally nothing to do with the first one, and that's where the dot and the line came from. It's so different. You, you, it's a romance, yeah. right. And it's, a, it's about mathematics. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, I, I just didn't want anybody, and to this day, I still get letters, when is the next one, is the sequel coming out yes. and everything. Did you ever contemplate doing, because this is, this is Alice in Wonderland, did you ever contemplate doing it through the looking glasses? I, I did, made a lot of notes on things, and I just decided it was not the kind of a story that I wanted to carry on, you know, in, into another realm or another point of view. It works with some things, you know. I I just didn't think it would work that way. I wanted it to stand alone, and that, so far that 
it's fine. 